Before we get into the specifics of the 1980D Lincoln Penny, let's first provide some background information. In the United States, the 1980s brought about a lot of innovation and change, including coin minting. Why, therefore, is the 1980D Lincoln Penny becoming more popular? It all comes down to uniqueness. Although the 1980 Penny's mintage is known to be relatively high, the D Mint Mark gives the story a fascinating twist. Although the Denver Mint produced a significant quantity, might a rare variant be hiding in plain sight? We must search for key variants in order to distinguish between the ordinary and the spectacular. The Wide Am Reverse is a noteworthy variant that collectors are drawn to. This is speaking of the distance between the and M in the United States. On the other hand, should you discover a wider spaced 1980D penny, perhaps you're onto something more. Let's speak about numbers now. What sort of worth are we considering? The collecting community has been left with disbelief by recent discoveries and auction results. Certain uncommon wide am 1980D Lincoln pennies have sold for hefty prices, maybe reaching the millions of dollars. Here are some pointers for those of you collectors out there. First, take a close look at your 1980D pennies, focusing on the distance between the characters. To confirm the legitimacy of your coin, think about having it authenticated by trustworthy grading agencies. Finally, to determine the possible value of your coin, keep up with current sales and market movements. And there you, you all have it. You might be holding a secret gem in your collection, the 1980D Lincoln Penny. At last, the coin has a $1 million value. The quarter issued in 1976 was a rather special coin. It commemorated 200 years since American independence. But while these coins are historically interesting, are they valuable? That's what we're going to investigate. We're going to look at the 1976 quarter value, exploring the different mint marks and varieties. We'll learn about the coin's design and interesting features, and we'll check out some of the unusual era coins out there. The obverse of the bicentennial quarter carries almost the same design as the quarter of the previous year. It shows the head of the first U.S. President, George Washington, in profile facing left. It was the work of John Flanagan, but it had not been everyone's first choice. The Washington Quarters were first issued in 1932 to mark the bicentenary of Washington's birth. Another committee had been set up to oversee the celebrations, and they had recommended that the commemorative coin use a design by Laura Garden Fraser. But when it was decided that the Washington Quarter would continue to be struck every year, the decision on the design passed to the Treasury. The Treasury Secretary at the time, Andrew W. Mellon, preferred Flanagan's portrait. The only difference between the bicentennial obverse and that of other Washington quarters is the date. This appears at the bottom of the coin, but on the bicentennial quarter, two dates are shown. These are 1776, the year in which the Declaration of Independence was signed, and 1976, the year of the bicentenary. Ours design for the reverse shows a colonial drummer alongside a torch of victory. The torch is surrounded by a circle of 13 stars representing the first states to join the Union. The country name curves along the top edge of the coin face, while the denomination is at the bottom. The Latin motto, E Pluribus Unum, is inscribed between the circle of stars and the drummer's right arm. It means, from the many one, and refers to the country's creation from the Union of States. Look closely and you'll see the designer's initials, JLR, just above the A and R of dollar. Both clad and silver quarters were struck in 1976. The silver coins were actually 40% silver overall, with the remainder copper. They measured 24.3 millimeters in diameter and weighed 5.75 grams. The clad variety of coins combined copper with nickel. Their core was pure copper, while the cladding was a mixture of 75% copper and 25% copper, giving them a silver appearance. They too measured 24.3 millimeters across, but were slightly lighter, at 5.67 grams. In 1976, the Philadelphia Mint facility wasn't marking any of its coins with a mint mark. So if your 1976 quarter has no mint mark on the obverse, it was struck in Philly. That also means it's a clad coin, as the silver variety were only struck in San Francisco. Almost 810 million Philadelphia Bicentennial quarters were produced in 1976. And the historic design meant that many people kept them as mementos. As a result, they're pretty easy to find in good condition today. Coins in circulated condition are generally only worth their face value 
unless they have an interesting error. We'll look at some error coins later. For a 1976 Philadelphia quarter to be worth more than its face value, it will need to be graded at around MS-63. The MS stands for Mint State and means the coin has never been circulated. An example graded MS-63 is valued by the independent coin graders, the PCGS, at $4. Coins graded between MS-65 and the maximum, MS-70, are referred to as gem quality. A Philadelphia Bicentennial Quarter graded MS-65 is worth around $1.28, while one graded MS-67 is worth about $1.80. Coins graded higher than this are much rarer and command high prices as a result. An example graded MS-67 Plus is worth about $2,350. And the finest example to have been graded by the PCGS to date is half a point higher at MS-68. That coin is valued today at $4,500. 2003 Lincoln Penny from Coin Ads Collection. Very lightly circulated coin surfaces of which are neatly preserved and exhibit laser-sharp design elements. Both sides of a coin are virtually pristine, showing no major marks. Letterings are crisp and display nowhere on high points and on device alike. Peach orange luster were slightly reduced due to tiny carbon explosions distributed all around the fields. One deep bag mark is seen on Lincoln's forehead. Not far from it, we see a little longer in size, diagonal abrasion on the reverse. First thing that catches the eye is this dark patina hailing above the letter A of Upper Legend. At the same time, one tortilla brown spot is visible on N of face value device displays very bold strike. Nowhere is seen on elements of memorial, just few nicks and bag marks. On columns above on United States of America, we observe a slanting mark dashing through the letter S. Overall coin has an outstanding eye appeal can be graded as at least AU55 by Sheldon Skeet, according to PCGs. Philadelphia Struck 2003 set is one of the most common dates, if not the most common date in series. Coins can be found up to MS69 condition and maybe even close to perfect MS70 condition as mintage is huge. 3.3 billion auction record for this coin was set in 2022. Nye 69 Red Gem ended up selling for $495 on eBay. Are you the lucky owner of a 1957 wheat penny and are curious about its value? Have you discovered an old wheat penny dated 1957 and wondered how much it is worth? You've come to the right place. We wrote this article to demystify the 1957 wheat penny value, the second last year date in the wheat penny series. The upside is that wheat pennies are collectible, especially because they feature Abraham Lincoln, one of our country's most iconic and popular presidents. However, these coins are mostly valuable in uncirculated condition. Some with interesting errors can be worth hundreds or thousands of dollars. Follow along as we answer the question, how much is a 1957 wheat penny worth? The obverse of the 1957 shows the right-facing portrait of President Abraham Lincoln. His image occupies 95% of the coin. At the top, you will see our country's motto, In God We Trust. The word liberty appears on the left side behind Lincoln's back, while the year date, 1957, is on the right in front of the president's portrait. On the reverse is a simple design showcasing two wheat ears, one on each side. The motto E Pluribus Unum is at the top of the coin along the inner rim. The coin's denomination, one cent, appears prominently in the middle of the coin, followed immediately by the words United States of America. The design of the 1957 wheat penny is as simple as that on the obverse and reverse. Like others in the series, the 1957 wheat penny is a relatively small coin, measuring 19.00 millimeters and weighing 3.11 grams. It has a plain edge. The coin's metal composition comprises 95% copper and 5% tin and zinc. The 1957 wheat penny was struck in Philadelphia and Denver. You will notice the mint mark D on the reverse of the coin struck in Denver while those minted in Philadelphia do not have a mint mark. So, now that we know the coin's history and features, is the 1957 wheat penny worth any money? This will depend on several factors, such as the coin's condition, mint mark, rarity, and color. Wheat pennies are generally only worth their face value, but can fetch more in uncirculated condition. These coins are also valued by their color, that is, red, red-brown, and brown, with red gems being the most desirable and brown circulated ones being the most affordable. There are three varieties of the 1957 wheat penny whose value we will explore in detail. 
These are the 1957 No Mint Mark Wheat, Penny 1957 D Wheat Penny, 1957 Proof Wheat Penny. The Philadelphia Mint made about 282,540,000 wheat pennies in 1957. Per the Mint's tradition, coins struck in Philly before the 1980s do not bear a mint mark, so you will not see one in your 1957 Lincoln Penny. The 1957 Wheat Penny's high mintage means this coin is common in all grades, including full red gems. The high mintage also means you can acquire or sell this coin affordably, with circulated examples ranging from $0.05 cents to $0.35. Cents. This coin is still very affordable even in mint state or uncirculated condition, with one graded MS-63 fetching about $1.50, while a gem quality MS-66 is valued at $12.50. Full red Wheaties are slightly more valuable than their brown counterparts because the red ones are usually uncirculated and in excellent condition. A red 1957 Wheat Penny graded MS-60 is affordable and costs about $2.50. However, this price can increase to as high as $4,300 for a gem quality example graded MS-67. If you are lucky enough to come across a full red 1957 No Mint Mark Wheat Penny, it might be worth a fortune. The same applies to potential buyers. You will likely need several thousand dollars to get your hands on a gem quality 1957 wheat penny with no mint mark. The most expensive 1957 no mint mark wheat penny sold to date was a full red gem graded MS-67. The coin fetched a whopping $20,400 at a 2022 heritage auction sale. Most 1991 Lincoln pennies aren't valuable, However, these pennies can sell for a premium in uncirculated condition. Type, Lincoln Penny, year, 1991, face value, 1 cent composition, 99.2% zinc, 0.8% copper, total weight, 2.5 grams. The U.S. minted the 1991 penny with no mint mark and also the 1991 D penny and 1991 S proof penny. The mint mark, when present, can be found on the obverse side of the coin below the date. Most 1991 pennies in circulated condition are only worth their face value of one cent. These coins can only sell for a premium in uncirculated condition. The 1991 penny with no mint mark and the 1991 D penny are each worth around 30 cents in uncirculated condition with an MS-65 RD grade. The 1991 S-proof penny is worth around $1.13 in PR-67 RD condition, MS. 65 RD gem uncirculated. There is strong luster and eye appeal. A few light contact marks may be present, but they are barely noticeable. The color is red. PR67 RD proof. There are no flaws to this coin. A few blemishes may be present. The color is red. Lincoln wheat pennies are coins with a long lifespan of over 110 years. With such a long history, it is expected to find numerous variations in their appearance. Predictably, Older versions of this coin are more attractive to collectors than modern specimens. To successfully determine the 1950 wheat penny value, you need to be familiar with their typical qualities. The coin price will be most affected by their preservation, traces of wear, and possible damage. Additionally, the mint mark is valuable to collectors. The wheat pennies are among the most important coins in American history. Their production began in 1909 and has continued until today. Depending on the date, you can recognize the few reverse looks, but the Lincoln image has remained on the obverse over time. This coin is known as the first to have the likeness of a genuine person on it. Before that, the U.S. Mint respected Washington's attitude against putting the faces of real people on coins because it was a common practice of the ruling monarchies in Europe. 1974. Lincoln pennies from Denver number around $4 billion, with the bulk of the lot valued at face value. However, those in superb gem uncirculated condition can go for $125. The highest anyone has paid for a Denver Mint coin is $950. This was a VF25 RD grade specimen posted on eBay on the 17th of January 2019. With the newly gained independence from the United Kingdom, America wanted to distance itself as much as possible from those customs. President Roosevelt changed this practice during his campaign to raise the artistic quality of American coins. Since the commemoration of the 100th anniversary of Lincoln's birth was approaching, Roosevelt decided to have the famous president's image on the one-cent coin. The Lithuanian emigrant Victor David Brenner was chosen to design the new cent.
The design you can see on the Penny Obverse has not changed since 1909. It features a dominant bust of Abraham Lincoln facing right. The motto, In God We Trust, extends along the upper edge above his profile. On the coin's left side is the word liberty, while in the lower part is the minting year. You can also find the mint mark when the coin is from the Denver or San Francisco mint below the minting year. The reverse appearance of this coin shows the origin of the name Wheat Penny. The design exhibits two stalks of wheat running down the coin sides. Along the upper rim, you can read the saying E Pluribus Unum. In the center are two inscriptions. The upper one indicates the denomination one cent, while you can read the United States of America under it. The price of circulated brown pieces is three cents to seven cents. You can even find those in the mint state, up to MS-64, for less than one dollar. Pennies graded MS-65 cost dollar 26, while MS-66 rating ones are worth dollar 120. Those in MS-67 grade have a slightly higher price, and you can buy one for dollar 1,200. The red-brown pennies are slightly more expensive, and those graded MS-63 to MS-66 are available for $0.35 cents to $1.15. However, it is necessary to set aside $1.45 to $1.55 for pieces in a high MS-67 grade. As always, red pennies cost the most. The price of coins graded MS-63 to MS-66 is $1.2 to $1.84. On the other hand, those ranking MS-67 are worth $1.800 to $1.960. The most expensive 1950 Philadelphia penny is in MS67 plus grade since one collector paid $10,575 for it at an auction in 2020. Our 1999 penny value, how much is it worth today? The 1999 penny is a coin that is still in circulation today. Some coin collectors may be curious whether it is worth anything more than its one cent face value. Although the 1999 penny isn't especially rare or valuable in general, there are a few things that can change how much collectors value them. This article will examine the various factors, such as minting variations, errors, and conditions, that affect a 1999 penny's value. The 1999 is a relatively common coin, but it has an interesting history and can hold significant value for collectors. The D on the coin indicates that it was produced at the Denver Mint in 1999. One of the most notable features of the 1999 D penny is the possibility of finding two different varieties, the close AM and the wide AM varieties. On the back of the coin, the AM stands for A and M in America. The letters are almost touching in the close AM variant, while there is a clear gap between them in the wide AM variant. Since the close AM variant is regarded as rare, it is more expensive, particularly in top grades. It is a rare and sought-after discovery for collectors because this variety is the result of a die error. In terms of value, the 1999 D penny is not particularly rare or valuable. It is not difficult to locate these pennies in circulation. With 6,360,065,000 Lincoln Memorial coins made in 1999, the Denver Mint produced the most coins ever. While even beautiful pieces in an MS-69 grade can be found for $1.260, their average price ranges from $0.10 to $1.30. The 1999 D penny with the highest price tag is an exceptional coin with ban MS-69 grade and red toning that was sold at Heritage Auctions. It cost a collector $1,293 in 2013 to add it to his collection. The 1999 S Proof Penny distinguishes itself from other pennies with several noteworthy characteristics. One feature is that it has a highly polished surface that resembles a mirror. The 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, is depicted on the reverse side of the coin in a sharper, more defined manner. The Lincoln Memorial is depicted on the reverse side, and it is more precisely defined and detailed than on normal circulation pennies. The value of the 1999 S penny has gradually risen over the years, with some specimens selling for thousands of dollars at auction. A 1999 S proof coin is worth 50 cents to dollar four, but you should budget dollar 25 to dollar 130 for pieces with close AM. However, in 2021, a 1999 S proof penny that the Professional Coin Grading Service (PCGS) had graded as a flawless proof 70 was auctioned off at $4,800. 1976, half-dollar coin value. 1976 was a momentous year. It marked 200 years since American independence. 
To celebrate the occasion, new versions of three denominations were produced. One of those was the half dollar, commonly referred to as the Kennedy half dollar. We're going to explore the 1976 half dollar value. We'll look at the difference between a coin that's worth a few dollars and one that's worth thousands. And we'll investigate some of the era coins that are worth big money. The half dollar struck in 1976 marked 200 years since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Three commemorative coins were proposed to mark the occasion, a quarter, a half dollar, and a dollar. The proposals came from a special committee that had been set up a decade earlier to prepare for the bicentenary, but the Treasury were at first reluctant to go along with the idea. Previous issues of commemorative coins had not always been successful, and the nadir had been reached with commemorative coins featuring George Washington Carver and Booker T. Washington. Distribution problems led to the coins being repeatedly discounted before many finally passed into circulation, and the resulting bad publicity meant the Treasury was wary of a repeat performance. But there was strong political support for the commemorative coins, and in 1972, the Treasury dropped its opposition. A competition was run to find a design for the new coins. Anyone could submit a design, and over 15,000 inquiries were made before the competition deadline. In the end, over 800 designs were submitted, and a judging panel was established to draw up a shortlist. The obverse of the bicentennial half dollar remained largely the same as the coins from the previous year. They still bore the image of John F. Kennedy produced by the Mint's chief engraver at the time of the first Kennedy half dollars, Gilroy Roberts. Above Kennedy's image, the word liberty curves around the upper two-thirds of the coin edge, and the motto, In God We Trust, appears alongside Kennedy's neck. The only difference from earlier half dollars was the date. The bicentennial edition had two dates beneath the portrait. These read 1776, 1976, with a dot separating the years. The prize-winning image for the reverse of the 1976 half dollar was the work of Seth Huntington. He was the head artist at a Minneapolis publishing firm called Brown and Bigelow. The design showed Independence Hall in Philadelphia. This historic civic building was the place where America's founding fathers had debated and adopted the Declaration of Independence. Its name was inscribed beneath the image to prevent any confusion. On the left-hand side as you view the coin are the words, 200 years of freedom. On the right is the Latin motto, E Pluribus Unum. This appears on all U.S. coins and means from the many one, a reference to the creation of the USA from the individual states. Most circulated examples are worth only their face value, and values for even mint state coins, those that have never been circulated, are relatively modest at most grades. The independent coin graders, the PCGS, value a coin graded MS60 at just $3. Values climb to $12 at MS63 and $22 at MS64. A gem quality MS65 example will be worth around $1.55, while one at MS66 breaches three figures at $1.175. Prices jump again at MS67, with a coin at that level worth around $1,750. 19 coins have been certified at that grade by the PCGS, with only one graded higher. That one is graded MS67 plus and is currently valued at $3,150. Most 1978 Lincoln pennies aren't valuable, However, these pennies can sell for a premium in uncirculated condition. Type, Lincoln Penny. Year, 1978. Face value, 1 cent. Composition, 95% copper, 5% zinc. Total weight, 3.11 grams. The U.S. minted the 1978 penny with no mint mark, and also the 1978 D penny and 1978 S proof penny. The mint mark, when present, can be found on the obverse side of the coin below the date. Most 1978 pennies in circulated condition are only worth their weight in copper. The current copper melt value for each penny is about two cents. These coins can only sell for a premium in uncirculated condition. The 1978 penny with no mint mark and the 1978 D penny are each worth around $1 in uncirculated condition with an MS65 RD grade. The 1978 S proof penny is worth around $13 in PR67 RD condition, MS. 65 RD gem uncirculated. There is strong luster and eye appeal. A few light contact marks may be present, but they are barely noticeable. The color is red. How much is a 1987 penny worth? Once the United States Mint converted to a copper-plated zinc planche in 1982, 
1987 Lincoln Memorial Penny resembles previous 1980s Lincoln Pennies produced. Victor David Brenner designed the obverse of the Lincoln Cent in 1909 and etched his initials VDB, making it one of the coin's most distinctive characteristics. The reverse side of Pennies was created by Frank Gasparro, who printed the Lincoln Memorial design there from 1959 to 2008. The average weight of a 1987 cent is 2.5 grams, though coins that are severely worn could weigh less. 1987D Lincoln Memorial Penny is available in all grades. Most of the circulating currency will be damaged, but some people have a penny still in excellent condition. These coins are eye-catching and well-detailed, and most of Lincoln Memorial's one cent are available in circulation. If you want to buy these coins, you should have minimal trouble finding one. Always search for high-grade coins and choose the verified one if possible. Stay connected, and you will acknowledge everything about 1987 Penny in this post. The 1987D Penny, the 1987S Proof Penny, and the 1987 Penny were created by authorities in the U.S. without a mint mark. On the back of the coin, beneath the date, is the mint mark. In circulated condition, the majority of 1987 pennies are only worth one cent face value. In an uncirculated state, these coins can only command a premium. The value of an uncirculated 1987 penny ranges from 10 cents to 30 cents. A few 1987 Lincoln cents are far more valuable, with the best examples fetching hundreds of dollars. $100,000 is the price of these currencies. Be careful, you may have one of these in your pocket because each one of these coins is worth a fortune. Welcome to the channel again. Before we start the video, I want to extend my deepest condolences to one of your loyal buyers of your channel. His mother has died. I wish you patience. I wish you all the best. Whoever watches this video, send him a comment. His name is Daniel. Okay, let's start the video. The application of mint marks was suspended for the coins dated 1965 to 67 in an effort to discourage speculators who were wrongly blamed for a nationwide coin shortage at about that same time. While most denominations were coined at several mints during those years, the circulating half dollars dated 1965, 1966, and 1967 were produced exclusively at the Denver Mint. Nearly all of the 1,965 dated halves were struck during the first seven months of 1966, and they did not debut in circulation until March of that year. It was the fate of most Kennedy half dollars dated before 1971 to be hoarded, though the silver-clad issues of 1965 to 69 did see enough circulation that they are readily available in lightly worn condition. The 1965 halves, while quite common unworn, are rarely found in the higher grades. Even at the MS-66 level, the supply of certified coins falls short of the demand from advanced collectors. Varieties are few for this date, and most are very minor. Pre-1965 silver half-dollar coins do offer several advantages. First, they are significantly smaller than one-ounce products, which makes them ideal for bartering in smaller transactions. Secondly, like bullion rounds, this form of silver offers a low premium over the spot market price of silver. The market value of junk silver is often very close to the actual melt value of the coins. Investors can get more ounces of silver for whatever they plan to spend by choosing half dollars in favor of more expensive alternatives. Thirdly, they are legal U.S. tender, albeit only for the face value of 50 cents. While it would be a very bad idea to spend these coins for the face value, their status as legal tender backed by the U.S. government does instill a measure of trust and confidence. That could be important when the time comes to sell or trade them. Finally, silver junk bags are bought and sold in huge quantities and are therefore very liquid, easy to buy, and easy to sell. Silver half dollars are machine counted into bags when a client's order is released to be packed and shipped. Money metals can accommodate orders starting as small as $5 face value, 10 coins. Silver coin bags of dimes and quarters are available in addition to half dollars and are generally priced even lower. Making the cost and the coin values a great choice for those looking to spend less, yet still obtain silver. Or a great choice for those coin collecting because you're able to buy them in bulk, giving you a variety of dates. The 1965 Kennedy half dollars have value as both numismatic coins and as silver bullion type. Kennedy half dollar year, 1965. Face value, 
50 cents composition, 60% copper, 40% silver, silver weight, 0.147893 ounces, total weight, 11.5 grams, current silver bullion, value, $3.71, the U.S. minted the 1965 half dollar with no mint mark, no other half dollar series were minted for this year, value, this coin in circulated condition is worth at least its weight in silver. The silver melt value for this coin is $3.71. This melt value is calculated from the current silver spot price of $25.08 per ounce. Most of the Kennedy half dollars for sale are in uncirculated condition. Collectors saved these coins upon release, so most of them were never in circulation. The 1965 half dollar with no mint mark is worth around $1.06 in uncirculated condition with a grade of MS-63. Uncirculated coins with a grade of MS-65 can sell for around $1.75. Note, there were no half dollar proof coins minted for this year. Click here to search for 1965 half dollars on Amazon. Grading system. Even though only 50 years passed until these coins were minted, the 1972 quarter value can be significantly higher than their face value. However, it is only valid for those in the mint state. While circulated pieces are too worn out to be attractive to collectors, be aware that this coin series started in 1932, meaning coins from the 1970s are still modern. Their significance is based on the fact that they belong to a collectible set, a respectful part of coinage history. How things are, you need to wait for another few decades to see their value increasing. You can recognize several Washington Quarter eras when the U.S. Mint redesigned both the obverse and reverse for different reasons and on special occasions. Therefore, you can identify these coins as heraldic eagle quarters, silver coins, minted in 1932 and from 1934 to 1964, heraldic eagle quarters, clad coins, minted from 1965 to 1974, Bicentennial quarters minted in 1975 and 1976, heraldic eagle quarters, clad coins, minted from 1977 to 1998, state quarters minted from 1999 to 2008, U.S. territories quarters minted in 2009, America, the beautiful quarters minted from 2009 to 2021. The idea that George Washington deserved to get a coin with his image on the coin of verse was old. However, everyone knew that the first president despised such a solution and considered it too monarchist. However, officials decided it was time to honor this crucial man in American history. Unfortunately, the entire contest about coin design was followed by an unpleasant event. Namely, Laura Fraser sent the winning design among 99 others. But the Secretary of the Treasury had the final decision. The result was John Flanagan's creation you can see on all coins minted for decades. The first coinage contained silver, but that was changed in 1965. Since then, all quarters have included copper and nickel instead of precious metals, including pieces minted in 1972. Most of the 215,048,000 quarters minted in Philadelphia in 1972 were released into circulation and spent decades in use. Since they show more or less signs of wear, their average market price is only about 25 cents. Even excellently preserved pieces are relatively inexpensive, so you can buy one coin in MS-60 to MS-63 grade for $1 to $2, while ranking MS-64 and MS-65 cost $5 to $18. You can count for more money only if you have a better graded piece. For instance, Mississippi, 66 ranked coins are worth $1.40, while the 1,972 MS-67 quarters are estimated at $1.750. The most valuable is undoubtedly a rare specimen in MS-67 plus grade sold at Heritage Auctions in 2018 for $1,320. A 1998 Washington quarter is fairly modern, but it is still collectible given the popularity of President George Washington. So, what is the 1998 quarter value? The truth is such a modern or recent Washington quarter is not worth a fortune, especially in circulated condition. Some 1998 quarter errors can be valuable, fetching you significantly more than the coin's face value. In fact, some collectors specialize in identifying and collecting 1998 Washington quarters. In that light, it is worth learning more about the 1998 quarter value so you can make a smart decision whether you want to add this coin to your collection or even sell a unique example you own. We'll go over a bit of the coin's history, its physical attributes, and grading tips. 
you will also discover errors worth money that you should pay attention to. Let's now look at the unique physical attributes of the 1998 quarter. A greater understanding of these features will help you know what to look for in 1998 quarters worth money and generally identify Washington quarters worth adding to your collection. President George Washington's portrait is the most prominent feature on the obverse of the 1998 quarter. The coin's designer, John Flanagan, based his design on Washington's bust created by the renowned sculptor Jean-Antoine Houdin in 1872. In the portrait, Washington faces straight ahead, his hair held loosely in a low ponytail. At the top of the coin, around the inner rim, you will see the word liberty. The country's motto, In God We Trust, appears on the left surface while the date, 1998, appears at the bottom. The reverse of the 1999 quarter is more detailed. It features the bald, flying eagle with its wings spread out while perched on several arrows. The arrows represent liberty and a readiness to defend the country's sovereignty. An olive branch underscores the image of the eagle perched on the arrows. This branch symbolizes peace. The country's name boldly appears at the top along the inner rim, while the coin's denomination, quarter dollar, appears directly opposite at the bottom. Above the eagle's head, you will also notice the motto, E Pluribus Unum, which means out of many, one. The mint at Philadelphia produced 896,268,000 Washington quarters in 1998. This mintage is extremely high but unsurprising given that the Washington Quarter Series is known for its high mintages almost every year. The 1,998 P Quarter is abundant across all grades, and the high mintage also makes it affordable. This coin will fetch between 30 cents and 85 cents in circulated condition. Even in some mint state grades, the 1,998 P Quarter is affordable. You can get your hands on a nice looking MS65 for just $1.10. These coins become harder to find in MS66 and higher, but enough examples have been graded to meet collectors' demands. A specimen that is graded MS67 will set you back about $375. According to the Professional Coin Grading Service, PCGS, the most expensive 1,998p quarter is graded MS68 and was sold for a whopping $1,380 at a 2007 Heritage Auction sale. Do you own a 1967 Washington Quarter and are curious about its worth? You've come to the right place. Although Washington Quarters are not rare, these coins are historically significant as they celebrate our country's first president, George Washington. The U.S. Mint struck this coin at a time of great coin shortage and had to make several changes to keep collectors from hoarding silver coins for their melt value. Read on to learn more about the 1967 quarter value and errors worth hundreds of dollars. In the early 1960s, the country experienced a severe coin shortage alongside ever-rising silver prices. In a panic, people began hoarding coins for large sums, including the Kennedy half-dollar, nickels, and cents. The United States Mint responded to the shortage by producing more 1964 coins well into 1965 but this had the negative impact of depleting the Treasury's silver stock. So high was the spot price of silver that then-President Lyndon Johnson halted using silver to produce quarters and nickels. Instead, the new coins would comprise a copper core clad in a copper-nickel layer. Between 1965 and 1967, the Mint attempted to minimize hoarding during a coin shortage by striking new copper-clad coins without mint marks. The practice of using mint marks resumed in 1968. The 1967 quarter is a copper-clad coin with a pure copper core covered by an outer layer of 75% copper and 25% nickel. It weighs 5.67 grams and measures 24.30 millimeters in diameter. The coin has a reeded edge. As mentioned, the 1967 Washington quarter does not have mint marks, so you cannot tell from where any of these coins originate, that is, Philadelphia, Denver, or San Francisco. Check out this video for more interesting facts about the 1967 Washington Quarter. When grading the 1967 Quarter, a specific feature you should assess is George Washington's hair. Check out this area of the coin keenly for wear and tear. The hair is more prone to wear, and its condition will tell you whether the coin is circulated, slightly circulated, or uncirculated. Uncirculated quarters may be further categorized into cameo or deep cameo. 
These terms simply refer to high-quality coins with a significant contrast between the design and the surface. These coins also boast a brilliant, lustrous, mirror-like surface. Cameo, cam, Washington quarters can fetch as much as $2,000, while deep cameo, decam coins are valued at $3,000 or more, depending on their scarcity. Do you own a 1985 quarter and are curious whether it is worth any money? Are you a George Washington fan interested in adding a 1984 quarter to your collection? We wrote this guide just for you. Washington quarters are collectible because they commemorate our country's first president, George Washington. Some may be worth hundreds or thousands of dollars if you know what to look for. This guide will teach you everything you need to know about the 1985 quarter value. Ultimately, you will make a smart decision whether you want to buy or sell your quarter. We'll explore the coin's history, features, grading tips, and most importantly, find out how much is a 1985 quarter worth. On the obverse of the 1985 quarter, you will see the left-facing portrait of President George Washington. The coin's designer, John Flanagan, based this portrait on a 1784 bust of Washington created by sculptor Jean-Antoine Houdon. The motto, In God We Trust, appears on the left surface, while the date, 1985, can be seen at the bottom around the inner rim. The word liberty appears prominently at the top, above Washington's head. You will also notice the mint mark on the right surface behind Washington's ponytail. The mint marks P and D are for coins struck in Philadelphia and Denver, respectively. Admittedly, there is a lot going on on the reverse of the 1985 quarter. The balding eagle with wings spread out wide occupies most of the coin's surface. The eagle is perched on a bunch of arrows, representing readiness to defend the Union against adversaries. Underneath, you will notice an olive branch. This branch usually symbolizes peace, unity, and diplomacy, indicating the country's commitment to uphold peace. The county's name, United States of America, appears at the top of the coin and is immediately followed by the motto, E Pluribus Unum. The coin's denomination, one quarter, appears around the bottom, bringing the beautiful reverse design together. The 1985 quarter comprises a pure copper core and an outer clad layer comprising 75% copper and 25% nickel. It measures 24.30 millimeters in diameter and weighs only 5.67 grams. The coin has a modern reeded edge with ridges running parallel to the face on both sides. The Philadelphia Mint struck an estimated 775,818,962 Washington quarters in 1985, the highest mintage that year compared to the production levels in Denver and San Francisco. You are right if you think this is a large number of coins minted in a single year. As a result, the 1,985 P is very common and generally affordable in all grades. You can identify quarters minted at the Philadelphia facility by the mint mark on the obverse, just behind Washington's ponytail. Many of the over 700 million 1,985 P Washington quarters were released into circulation. So most of the examples you will come across today will be well-worn and will typically not fetch a premium. In circulated condition, you can expect between 30 cents and 85 cents for a 1985 quarter struck in Philly. This coin is relatively affordable even in higher mint grades, with an MS-65 costing about $1.20. Gem quality specimens are extremely rare and will fetch as much as $1,700 when they appear at auction. Do you own a 1981 quarter and wonder whether this relatively old coin is worth anything? Maybe you are considering adding a 1981 Washington quarter to your collection and want to know whether it is worth any money. You've come to the right place. In this article, you will learn everything you need to about the 1981 quarter value. We'll explore the coin's interesting history, unique features, and what to look for to know whether your Washington quarter is valuable. You will also discover errors that can significantly improve the value of your quarter. The Washington Quarter entered circulation on August 1, 1981, and is still in circulation as the current quarter dollar. Congress established a bicentennial committee to organize George Washington's 200th birth anniversary. The committee proposed that the United States Mint create a Washington half dollar as part of the celebrations. This new coin would ideally replace the Walking Liberty half dollar for 1932 only, but Congress had other plans. Instead of replacing the Walking Liberty half dollar, Congress replaced the Standing Liberty Quarter with a permanent Washington Quarter. The new silver coin would feature Washington's portrait on the obverse. 
The Bicentennial Committee and Commission of Fine Arts had engaged a well-known sculptor, Laura Garden Fraser, to design a commemorative medal. The committee and commission had expected Fraser to use medals design to create the newly proposed Washington Quarter. However, then Treasury Secretary Andrew Mellon rejected Fraser's design, instead organizing a new competition to choose the coin's next design. In the end, Mellon, who was in charge of approving coin designs, chose John Flanagan's design, and this decision was publicly announced on April 16, 1932. The obverse or heads of the 1981 quarter features the left-facing portrait of George Washington based on Jean-Antoine Houdon's sculpted bust of our country's first president. The word liberty appears above his head, while the date 1981 appears at the bottom of his truncated neck. The country's motto, In God We Trust, is displayed on the coin's surface to the left. You will also notice the mint mark right behind Washington's low ponytail. On the reverse of the 1981 quarter is an intricate design of the American heraldic eagle, with wings spread out while perched on a bunch of arrows, symbolizing independence and readiness to defend the country. Two olive branches entwined at the middle frame the eagle's portrait. Above the eagle's head is our country's name followed by the motto E Pluribus Enum. The coin's denomination, quarter dollar, appears below the olive branches. These coins are equally common in mint state and can be found in uncirculated rolls and mint sets. In grade mint state MS60, a Washington 1981 P quarter can fetch as much as $1.50, but this price can increase to $1.70 for a rare quarter graded MS67. According to the Professional Coin Grading Service, PCGS, there are only three known examples of 1,981p quarters graded MS67 and and the most expensive one sold for $1.700 in 2018 at an online auction. The quarter issued in 1976 was a rather special coin. It commemorated 200 years since American independence. But while these coins are historically interesting, are they valuable? That's what we're going to investigate. We're going to look at the 1976 quarter value, exploring the different mint marks and varieties. We'll learn about the coin's design and interesting features, and we'll check out some of the unusual era coins out there. The quarters produced in 1976 were one of three denominations to have a commemorative design on the reverse. The others were the half dollar and dollar, and all three were the suggestion of a special committee set up to oversee the celebration of the bicentenary of American independence. The Treasury had at first been reluctant to agree the proposals. Its experience of commemorative coins had been mixed. The last issue, in 1952, had been something of a disaster. The coins didn't sell, and after repeated discounts, many of them had passed into circulation. The mint had endured bad publicity as a result, and Treasury officials were anxious not to repeat the experience. But with considerable political support for the idea of bicentennial coins, they eventually acquiesced. The obverse, the head side of the coins, would remain largely unchanged from standard issues, but a competition was run to find a design for the reverse of all three commemorative denominations. Almost 900 designs were submitted from across the country. A judging panel whittled these down to a short list of 12 and then to six. The Bicentenary Committee reviewed the final six and made recommendations to the Treasury Secretary, George Schultz. Schultz picked a design by Jack L. R. for the quarter. It showed a colonial drummer, together with a torch of victory. The design attracted some controversy, with the designer of a 1973 bicentennial stamp, William A. Smith, accusing R. of copying his work. Both designs featured a colonial drummer, but R. maintained that he had based his image on his son. The obverse of the bicentennial quarter carries almost the same design as the quarter of the previous year. It shows the head of the first U.S. President George Washington in profile facing left. It was the work of John Flanagan, but it had not been everyone's first choice. The Washington quarters were first issued in 1932 to mark the bicentenary of Washington's birth. Another committee had been set up to oversee the celebrations, and they had recommended that the commemorative coin use a design by Laura Garden Fraser. But when it was decided that the Washington Quarter would continue to be struck every year, the decision on the design passed to the Treasury. The Treasury Secretary at the time, Andrew W. Mellon, preferred Flanagan's portrait. The only difference between the bicentennial obverse and that of other Washington Quarters is the date. This appears at the bottom of the coin, 
but on the bicentennial quarter, two dates are shown. These are 1776, the year in which the Declaration of Independence was signed, and 1976, the year of the bicentenary. R's design for the reverse shows a colonial drummer alongside a torch of victory. The torch is surrounded by a circle of 13 stars, representing the first states to join the Union. The country name curves along the top edge of the coin face, while the denomination is at the bottom. The Latin motto, E Pluribus Unum, is inscribed between the circle of stars and the drummer's right arm. It means, from the many one, and refers to the country's creation from the Union of States. Look closely, and you'll see the designer's initials, JLR, just above the A and R of dollar. For a 1976 Philadelphia quarter to be worth more than its face value, it will need to be graded at around MS-63. The MS stands for Mint State and means the coin has never been circulated. An example graded MS-63 is valued by the independent coin graders, the PCGs, at $4. Coins graded between MS-65 and the maximum, MS-70, are referred to as gem quality. A Philadelphia Bicentennial quarter graded MS-65 is worth around $1.28, while one graded MS-67 is worth about $1.80. Coins graded higher than this are much rarer and command high prices as a result. An example graded MS-67 Plus is worth about $2,350. And the finest example to have been graded by the PCGS to date is half a point higher, at MS-68. That coin is valued today at $4,500. If you found a quarter dated 1986 in your pocket change, you might be asking yourself some questions. Who designed it? How rare is it? And most importantly of all, what's it worth? That's what we're here to find out. We're going to explore the 1986 quarter value and find out what factors affect it. We'll dig into its history and design, and we'll discover some of the interesting error coins that escaped the Mint's quality control processes. The 1986 quarter is one of a series known as Washington Quarters. They get their name from the portrait on the obverse, or head, side of the coin. That depicts the first president of the USA, George Washington. The first Washington Quarters were struck in 1932, and in those days they were made of 90% silver. But over the years, the rising price of silver bullion meant that it became ever more expensive to produce the coins. And that wasn't the only problem. Hoping that the silver content would soon be worth more than the coin's face value, members of the public began to hoard them. Making expensive coins that were never used wasn't the Treasury's idea of sound economy. So in 1965, they took action. They continued to strike quarters dated the previous year, hoping this would discourage the hoarding. But the plan didn't work, and a few months later, the Treasury decided to remove the silver from the quarters instead. From then on, the coins would be made of copper, clad in cupronicle, to retain the silver color. The 1986 quarter, like all clad quarters, measures 24.3 millimeters in diameter and weighs 5.67 grams. While the dimensions are the same as for the earlier silver quarter, the weight is slightly lighter. The silver coins weighed in at 6.25 grams. Turn the quarter on its side, and you'll see a series of parallel grooves running parallel to the coin faces. These are known as reeds. They're made by the collar which holds the planchet in place as it's struck by the die. But they're not just decorative. Reeded edges were first introduced in the 18th century in the days when coins were usually made out of precious metal. Unscrupulous traders would sometimes slice slivers of metal from the edges, devaluing the coins. The patterned edge would allow anyone receiving the coin to see at once that it had been tampered with. All quarters from 1986 will have either a Denver, Philadelphia, or San Francisco mint mark. From 1977 to 1979, quarters were struck at the mint facility at West Point too, but they weren't marked. 1986 saw over 551 million quarters struck at the Philadelphia mint facility, and as a relatively recent mintage, many of those still survive. The independent coin grading agency, the PCGs, estimates that around 193 million exist today. But not all of those coins are of equal value. Generally speaking, the better the condition, the rarer and more valuable a coin will be. Coin condition is graded on a scale from 1 to 70. 1 signifies a coin that's in very poor condition, with just enough detail remaining to allow the denomination and mintage to be identified. 
A coin graded 70, on the other hand, is flawless. Coins that have never been circulated are known as mint state and graded MS-60 and above, and coins graded MS-65 and higher are known as gems. A 1986 P quarter in circulated condition won't usually be worth more than its face value. The exception to that rule would be a coin with an interesting mint error. In mint state, values start at around a dollar for a coin graded MS-60 and rise gradually from there. A gem MS-65 example could be yours for around $1.20, while at MS-66, the value is $1.85. From there, prices rise steeply. At MS-66+, plus, you can expect to pay around $1.300. The PCGs has certified 11 coins at MS-67 and values those at an impressive $2,000 apiece. And the top grade for this mintage is MS-67+. Plus. A coin at that level is worth around $3,000. Welcome to the channel again. How can this coin be worth more than $15,000 when you do not know its value? Please be careful. It may be in your pocket and you do not know. If you are new with us in the channel, subscribe with us in the channel and activate the bell feature so that you receive everything new. Our channel. I am Rosalia and this is my channel is dedicated to valuable coins and information about them. We will start with this coin that may be hidden in your pocket and you do not know. Okay, let's start the video. 1995 quarter coin value. Do you have a quarter dated 1995? Or are you looking to add one to your coin collection? If either of those are the case, you've come to the right place. We're going to explore the 1995 quarter value. We'll look at how it's affected by mint mark and condition. And we'll check out some of the interesting mint errors that can add a premium to prices. History. Of the 1995 quarter, 1995 saw four different quarters struck by the U.S. Mint. Business strike coins were struck in Philadelphia with a P mint mark and in Denver with a D. And both silver and clad proofs were produced too. Both were struck at the mint facility in San Francisco and bore the S mint mark. The 1995 quarter is one of the series known as Washington Quarters after the design on the obverse. This shows a portrait of the first U.S. President George Washington by the artist John Flanagan. The first Washington Quarters were produced in 1932. Until 1965, they had been made with silver. But rising silver prices meant that production costs were becoming ever higher. Even worse, those expensive coins were being hoarded by the public, who hoped the silver content might soon be worth more than their face value. Something had to give, and in 1964, the composition was changed to what was nicknamed at the time the Johnson Sandwich. The term reflected the involvement of President Lyndon B. Johnson in the change, and the sandwich referred to the construction of the new planches. The core was made of solid copper, while the silver color came from the cladding, an alloy of 75% copper and 25% silver. Washington quarters continue to be produced to this day. The original reverse was still being used in 1962, only being replaced in 1998. But since then, several different designs have been utilized. These include the 50 States program, and the America the Beautiful program. And today's Washington Quarters honor the accomplishments of American women. The Quarters struck in 1995 bore the same image of the first U.S. President George Washington that had graced that denomination since 1932. It shows Washington in profile, facing to the left as the coin is viewed. The word liberty arches over his head, while the date is at the bottom, curving parallel to the lower coin edge. The motto, In God We Trust, is tucked beneath his chin, and to the right of the portrait, near the coin edge, appears the mint mark. If the quarter was struck in Philadelphia, that will be a P, and if in Denver, there'll be a D. Washington's portrait was the work of an artist named John Flanagan. It was selected by the Treasury Secretary at the time, Andrew D. Mellon, but his choice attracted considerable debate. That was because a different portrait had already been chosen for a coin honoring Washington. With the bicentenary of his birth approaching, a committee had been set up to oversee the celebrations. Amongst their proposals was a coin bearing Washington's image that would be issued for a single year. It was to be a half dollar, and the committee had already selected a portrait by an artist named Laura Garden Fraser. But it was subsequently decided that Washington's coin should be a permanent addition to the nation's currency. And as such, the decision on its design passed to Mellon. He preferred Flanagan's portrait. The committee asked him to think again, and when that didn't work, 
put their case to his successor, Ogden L. Mills. But the decision stood, and from 1932 to 2021, it was Flanagan's portrait that appeared on the quarter. The Fraser portrait, however, has finally got its turn. It's being used for the American Women's series of quarters being issued from 2022 to 2025. The reverse or tails side of the 1995 quarter also features a design by Flanagan. It shows an eagle with outstretched wings, perched on a fletch of arrows. Beneath the bird is an olive branch. The words United States of America curve around the top of the coin, parallel to its edge. Beneath them is the Latin motto E Pluribus Unum, which means from the many one. It's a reference to the birth of the nation as a union of states. The denomination appears at the bottom of the coin. It's inscribed on a curve that follows the lower coin edge, and it's written in full as quarter dollar. The earliest Washington quarters had their mint mark on this side. It appeared just below the center of the olive branch. But by 1962, the Philadelphia Mint Facility struck large volumes of Washington quarters, although not as many as Denver. In 1995, the total mintage for the P mint mark was just over a billion coins. And today, the independent coin graders, the PCGs, estimate that over half a billion survive at all grades. Those huge numbers mean that the vast majority of 1995 P quarters are worth only their face value. Even coins graded 60 and above out of 70, known as mint state, can be purchased for modest sums. An example at MS60 is worth only a dollar. And even one graded MS65, the lowest level at which a coin is termed a gem, is valued by the PCGs at only $7. At MS66 and above availability declines and prices accordingly rise. The value of a 1995 P quarter graded MS66 is $42, increasing to $110 at MS67. To date, the finest examples to have been graded by the PCGS are five coins certified as MS68. There are likely to be more out there, however, and as a result, the price for one of these best-in-class quarters is a relatively low $2,850. Welcome, my friends, today to a new and exciting video and an exciting currency. In this video today, we will present to you one of the exciting currencies whose value is worth a lot of money, and we will give you some information about it and even the place where you can sell it. For this, follow the video with us until the end and support us by subscribing to the channel. 1953 Wheat Penny Coin Value The Wheat Penny was the third series of small cents after the Flying Eagle Cent and the Indian Head Cent. These small pennies were 19.05 mm in diameter, as opposed to the earlier large cents that were 28.5 mm in diameter. The reduction was caused by rising copper prices driven by the 1850s gold rush. But for now, we're interested in the 1953 Wheat Penny Value, the wheat penny or wheat cent is the earliest version of the Lincoln penny. It was launched in 1909 and six more would follow, namely the Memorial Penny in 1959, four bicentennials in 2009, and the Shield Penny that we still use today. All seven featured Abraham Lincoln, the 16th U.S. president, and the first one to appear on a circulating coin. But let's go back a bit. The idea for the wheat penny was seeded in 1904. Theodore Roosevelt, better known as Teddy, was the 26th U.S. president. He wanted American coins to be prettier. Some agreed with him, including top numismatists and artists of the time, and they'd been pushing for new coins. These proponents included Augustus St. Gaudens and Richard Watson Gilder. These two began to pester the U.S. Mint in the 1880s, and in 1891, St. Gaudens and nine other artists were invited to join a coin design contest. But the chief mint engraver, Charles Barber, seemed to deliberately set terms that the artists would shoot down. In the end, he did the new coins himself, and they came to be known as Barber Coinage. Fast forward to 1904. It can be helpful to describe coin features in numismatic terms. Consider referring to the head side as the obverse, the tail side as the reverse, the thin side as the edge, the raised border as the rim or collar, the words on the coin as mottos or legends, the images on the coin as devices, and the background is the field. Blank coin discs are known as planches. It shows Abraham Lincoln facing right. The motto, In God We Trust, floats over his head. The legend Liberty is behind him while the mint date and the mint mark are in front of him. On his portrait's shoulder cutoff, VDB is engraved to mark coin designer, 
Victor David Brenner. It shows two stalks of durum wheat framing the wording on the coin. At the top of the coin, between the tips of the two wheat sheaves, it says E Pluribus Unum. Below that, it shows the coin denomination, a.k.a. its face value, one cent. Under that, it says United States of America. The wheat penny was 95% copper with the 5% balance in zinc, tin, or both. As we said, the coin was 19.05 mm in diameter. In 1953, it weighed 3.11 g. Pennies have a smooth or plain edge, meaning they have no reeds. Their color ranges from red to red-brown and lastly brown. The Denver Mint made 700,515,000 pennies in 1953, all with the D-Mint mark. In February 2007, an AU-58 sold for $920, and in August of the same year, an MS-67RD sold for $7,475. Over 80 coins have popped up in this grade so far, sinking their value to $700 in September 2023. But about 10 coins have been submitted in MS67 plus RD. They're now worth $6,500. 1921. Morgan silver dollar coin value. Errors list D, S, and no mint mark worth. Do you own a 1921 silver dollar and are curious whether it is worth anything? Are you considering buying one of these silver coins to add to your collection? Understanding the 1921 silver dollar value is the first step toward making a smart decision, whether you want to buy or sell. The 1921 silver dollar is relatively popular among coin dealers and collectors. This was a single-year production coin. The United States Mint used special new dyes to mint these coins after resuming production of Morgan dollars following a 13-year hiatus. The Coinage Act of 1873 authorized the minting of the first silver dollar in the United States of America. The Morgan dollar led the way as the first silver currency in the country, and it was struck continuously from 1878 to 1904 when production ceased. The country underwent a great panic between 1893 and 1895, resulting in money hoarding. Then, it was believed that silver currency was a major cause of the widespread economic inflation that affected many households. Between 1878 and 1903, the mint struck large numbers of silver coins for circulation until the silver reserves were depleted eventually. This silver shortage led to the end of the production of Morgan dollars in 1904. Shortly after, the U.S. would melt a large number of its own silver coins to save the British economy. In the mid-1900s, at the peak of World War I, the Germans propagated a brutal smear campaign against the Brits. Germany claimed that British banknotes were valueless, which saw rushed demand and subsequent depletion of Britain's silver reserves. The U.S. government approved the Pittman Act of 1918 to stop the onslaught. The act approved the melting of 270,232,722 silver dollars, and the silver was sold to Great Britain for $1 per troy ounce. The U.S. remained with only a few silver dollars. Upon realizing this, they called for the resumption of the production of silver dollars in 1921. By this time, the mint had discarded the dyes used to strike the old Morgan dollars. So, new dyes had to be made to strike the new Morgan coins. The mint struck a new peace dollar that same year to celebrate the end of the First World War. There were also hopes that the peace dollar would replace the Morgan silver dollar. On the obverse of the Morgan silver dollar, we find the left-facing portrait of Lady Liberty with her flowy hair. She wears a Phrygian cap adorned with a flowery hair wreath with the words Liberty boldly embossed on it. Her head accessories symbolize freedom and peace. The motto E Pluribus Unum appears around the rim at the top, with each word separated by a single dot or period. The year of release 1921, is imprinted at the bottom. On the lower half of the coin, you will notice seven stars on the left around the rim and six on the right around the rim. The line of stars is separated by the year of release at the bottom. The obverse of the peace silver dollar features Lady Liberty with a pointy crown nestled in her flowy hair. Teresa de Francisci, the coin designer's wife, served as the model for Lady Liberty. The words Liberty appear around the rim at the top, while the date of release, 1921, is at the bottom. The motto, In God We, appears to the left, in front of Lady Liberty's neck, while the remaining word, T.R. Vest, is imprinted horizontally behind her neck. 
the reverse features a majestic portrait of the American bald eagle with a left-facing head and wings spread out wide. The bird clutches an olive branch in one talon and a bunch of arrows in the other. These two items represent peace and readiness to defend the country's sovereignty. The eagle's image is nestled in two olive branches, curved upwards and neatly tied together at the bottom. The words, United States of America, occupy the upper half of the rim. The coin's denomination, one dollar, appears around the rim at the bottom. A single star on each side separates these two sets of words. Our country's motto, In God We Trust, is imprinted at the top just above the eagle's head. You will also notice the mint mark right above the words, one dollar. 1921 Silver Dollar Value Guides. In circulated condition, a 1921 silver Morgan dollar graded G35 is worth about $1.40 while one graded AU50 can bring in about $1.50. Mint state dollars graded MS65 will fetch $2.210. At the furthest end of the grade at MS67, your coin can net in as much as $13,500. According to the Professional Coin Grading Service, PCGS, the most expensive 1921 no-mint mark silver dollar was graded MS67 and sold for $19,975 in 2015. $100,000 is the price of these currencies. Be careful, you may have one of these in your pocket because each one of these coins is worth a fortune. Welcome to the channel again. Before we start the video, I want to extend my deepest condolences to one of your loyal buyers of your channel. His mother has died. I wish you patience. I wish you all the best.